Research from the Terry College of Business reveals becoming a happy, helpful employee takes effort and, eventually, that effort erodes the energy needed to do one's job. It could lead to quiet quitting, the new term for just doing your job but not going above and beyond, or even actual quitting. The more people adjust their moods to be happy, the fewer emotional resources they have at the end of the day. That means they are less able to handle challenging tasks and interactions and have a harder time staying on task. Their tank is empty despite being in a good mood, Frank explained. I do not think I am twisting the usual meaning of drama if I define it as a presentation before spectators by performers who take on roles and who interact with each other to further a story or a text intended for such presentations. This is intended as a working definition simple enough to be recalled easily. Indeed, it is so simple that I should point out that it makes one or two distinctions that are perhaps not immediately obvious. First, to say that performers take on roles leaves open the possibility that they are not within the roles to other performances as such alternative phrases as performers in character or characters represented by actors do not. To say that the performers interact with each other might seem unnecessary, but is in fact important, for in traditional societies there are many performances in which different characters appear successively and simultaneously but, nevertheless, do not interact. And I say to further a story because a progression of the story may not provide the structure of the performance. According to BT's futurologist, Ian Pearson, these are among the developments scheduled for the first few decades of the new millennium, a period of 1,000 years, when supercomputers will dramatically accelerate progress in all areas of life. Pearson has pieced together the work of hundreds of researchers around the world to produce a unique millennium technology calendar that gives the latest dates when we can expect hundreds of key breakthroughs and discoveries to take place. Some of the biggest developments will be in medicine. Team Lab's digital mural at the entrance to Tokyo Skytree one of the world's monster skyscrapers, is 40 meters long and immensely detailed. But however massive this form of digital art becomes, and it's a form subject to rampant inflation, Inelko's theories about seeing are based on more modest and often pre-digital sources. An early devotee of comic books and cartoons, no surprises there, then computer games, he recognized when he started to look at traditional Japanese art that all those forms had something in common, something about the way they captured space. In his discipline of physics, Inelko had been taught that photographic lenses, along with the conventions of Western art, were the logical way of transforming three dimensions into two, conveying the real world onto a flat surface.
Roman poet Ovid wrote that there is nothing constant in the universe. All ebb and flow, and every shape that's born bears in its womb the seeds of change. These words are remarkably relevant when one considers the way life has changed through time as revealed by fossil record. The concept of health holds different meanings for different people and groups. These meanings of health have also changed over time. This difference is no more evident than in Western society today, when notions of health and health promotion are being challenged and expanded in new ways. Right now, a new technological wave of digitalization and smart automation, combinations of artificial intelligence, robotics and other technologies, is fundamentally transforming the way we work, at an unprecedented pace. For example, data analytics, the Internet of Things and drones are already used in many industries to make production processes better, faster, and cheaper. We already see shifts in the structure of employment in industries, tasks, educational levels, and skills. Turning now to the heart of the study, in two divisions an attempt was made to change the supervision so that the decision levels were pushed down and detailed supervision of the workers reduced. More general supervision of the clerks and their supervisors was introduced. In addition, the managers, assistant managers, supervisors and assistant supervisors of these two divisions were trained in group. In 1868, botanist Jules Emil Planchin unmasked the culprit behind a national crisis. For five years, a blight had been stealing across France's vineyards. Its cause was invisible, it spread inexorable. Always it followed the same pattern. First a single vine would wither, then a circle of plants. Entire vineyards were wiped out within years. Nissan will overhaul the inspection process for its Japan-destined vehicles for the first time in decades as the carmaker seeks to address a widening inspection scandal that has forced it to suspend production for the domestic market. The company said on Thursday that unauthorized workers had been certifying vehicles set for sale in the Japanese market, even after the company announced the recall of nearly 1.2M cars earlier this month over the same issue. With investors increasingly concerned about Japan Inc.'s adherence to standards, 
concerns that were most recently inflamed by the Kobe Steel data falsification scandal. The news pushed Nissan shares down 1.6% on Friday and also weighed on the prices of its suppliers. Hiroto Saikawa, Nissan's chief executive, pledged drastic measures to deal with the problem, namely the suspension of vehicle production for the home market at all six factories in Japan run by the company and its affiliate, Nissan Shatai. Academic writing is an expression of logic that is the product of thinking. This means that the writing that you produce is a reflection of your intellectual abilities. It puts into words your knowledge and your conceptual understanding and shows evidence of your ability to think critically. In any given population, about 10% of the people are left-handed and this figure remains relatively stable over time. So-called handedness runs in families, but what causes it and why the proportion of left-handed to right-handed people is a constant are still a mystery. One thing we do know is that hand dominance is related to brain asymmetry, and it seems to be generally agreed that the human brain is profoundly asymmetric, and that understanding how this works will tell us much about who we are and how our brains work. Brain function is distributed into the left and right hemispheres, and this is crucial for understanding language, thought, memory, and perhaps even creativity. For right-handed people, language activity is mainly on the left side. Many left-handers also have left-side language dominance, but a significant number may have language either more evenly distributed in both hemispheres or else predominantly on the right side of the brain. Because left-handedness is seen as a key to the complex anatomy of the brain, scientists are searching for links to other conditions, including immune disorders, learning disabilities, and reduced life expectancy. Computer viruses have been a fact of life at least since the 1980s, if not before. They can cause companies to lose hours of working time and they can also spread panic among computer users everywhere. There are, however, several distinct types of computer infection, all loosely referred to as viruses, and they each work in a slightly different way. A particularly nasty one is the worm, which is a program designed to sneak its way into an entire computer network and reproduce itself over and over again. Then there is the Trojan, which strictly speaking isn't a virus, but a piece of software that appears to do one thing, but actually does something malicious instead. When the unsuspecting operator introduces it into the computer, the alien program will take over the machine. With Trojans, you have to be particularly careful, because they can often be introduced by way of a message advertising an antivirus product. 
So what motivates someone to introduce a virus into the computer systems of innocent victims? The heart functions as a pump at the center of the circulatory system. In humans, it is located in the chest cavity, between the lungs, a bit to the left. The heart consists of four chambers surrounded by a very strong muscular wall, the myocardium. The upper chambers, the right and left atria, receive blood entering the heart, and the lower chambers, the right and left ventricles pump the blood out of the heart, via the pulmonary and the systemic circulatory systems. The two systems work as follows. Blood from the body enters the right atrium, is passed into the right ventricle, and from there is propelled through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. In the lungs, the blood releases carbon dioxide and absorbs oxygen and is then transported back to the heart into the left atrium. From here, it passes into the left ventricle, which pumps the oxygenated blood around the body. <laughs> 